Hello, hopefully you can all hear me. Um, if you can, it would be great if you could message there and just let me know that you can all hear me because we have had some terrible problems with this so far. OK, so welcome to the virtual open evening. Um, what we're going to be talking about here is we're going to be looking at some of the more humanities and social science subjects and um, we're, we're going to have a look at what ED6 and where we are and who we are in particular. So a little bit about who we are. So I always use this and I always say this. So we do get students who come from other areas, so not just Peter Lee area. We also have them from Hartlepool and Durham and Sunderland. We've had some from Gateshead. So but this is predominantly if you are from Peter Lee, we are the academic sixth form college right on your doorstep. Now you might be thinking, why is that important? It's very important in that you, when you take on this next level, um, these courses are very intense. They can at times feel a little bit stressful. So the less time you are traveling on a bus to and from a college, the better. If you can reduce your day by two hours by not traveling on buses, then it's definitely by far better. So it is important to know that we are recognized as the academic sixth form college right on your doorstep. So. We're all about getting the best out of you. So again, the college slogan, EDC's college slogan is creating outstanding futures. And this is something that we as a team of people in the East Durham College really take on board. And everything we do um, leads to creating outstanding futures in all of the students, all the learners who come to us. And what we look at particularly is highly qualified lecturers. So in ED6, what you have is a range of staff who are all qualified teachers, who are all qualified to a minimum of first degree in their individual subjects, but also you have many who have postgraduate degrees and also PhDs working within our ED6 department. You have a dedicated progression coach assigned to you. Now that is really, really important because there will be times when you'll need other advice and guidance, which is not academic. There may be times where you just like might to have might like to have a chat with somebody who isn't one of your lecturers, even though you can always speak to them. Now, you will have regular tutorial sessions in the first semester with uh, your progression coach, but that progression coach will also be there for all of the time for your full two years while you're with us. High expectations. We do have high expectations. We are high performing quality organisations, so we have high, high expectations of ourselves and of our students and that's the way to maintain our outcomes for our learners and our outcomes in terms of progression progression um, one of the high expectations we have is we really really are quite insistent on very good attendance now um, what we're looking at is ideally 100%, but we're aware that that can't always be achieved, but we're looking at anything above 95% is an acceptable attendance. Once we dropping below that, what we tend to see is that that will have an effect on the grades that the student can achieve. So we recommend that all students commit right at the very beginning to an excellent attendance record. You will have heard this at school. You'll know this from your GCSEs. You'll know that teachers will have told you there. You're not going to do as well in your GCSEs if you don't have good attendance. It, this is true. This is not something that um, we just make up. There's actual evidence out there that there is a correlation between attendance and grades achieved. Now, attitude and behaviour. Now, obviously, we have high expectations as a team that our attitude and our behaviour towards our learners will always be um, the top, the top kind of behaviour and attitude that we can offer. But we will also expect that our students will always be respectful and our students will not um, show any significant behaviour which could cause or disrupt other learners. So we do keep a very strict policy on attitude and behaviour, although we don't usually have to use it because our ED6 learners usually come and they are aware that um, 
they have to be focused and they have to stay motivated and they have to um, not disrupt anybody or, or, or be disrupted because if they don't, then they won't do as well as they could do. So we don't tend to have problems with attitude and behaviour in our AD6 students. That's because of the quality of our students and also because of the very mature attitude of our students. We do have an open door policy. Now, what that means is, you know, we have a student services who there's always somebody there. These are great people. Um, you know, you can go in and have a chat. They can help you out with things to do with bursaries. They can help you out with your travel. They can help you out with a wide range of things. You're also going to have your progression coach who is there for you whenever you might need um, to have a chat or you just want to get some guidance or advice. But also your lecturers are there for you, too. Never go away without asking us if you need any help or you have a question. Don't go away. Come and speak to us. We're there for you. And if you do go away or you remember something once you've left a lesson, come and find us. Pop in and have a chat with us and we can sort it out there and then. This is our open door policy. It is the college's open door policy overall. Um, full and rounded programme of study. Yeah, we will tailor make your study programme to suit you. So that will be if you tell us what degree you want to go into, what career, what your next plans, your next steps are, what we can look at what is best for you and we can guide you on that. We also offer alternative programmes for some students who maybe don't want to do all exams, but want to do some exams and coursework as well. So we do offer a broad range um, that fits into your study programme. We do have additional specialist support, so if there are any of you and you join us and you may in the past have had things like um, a scribe or a reader or extra time in exams, all of that continues. But my advice and guidance to you is if you do have any additional support that you think that we can provide you with, that you let us know. And the sooner you let us know, the sooner we can put that into place for you, the sooner we can sort you and then we can just get on with the business of teaching and learning. OK, so this is a little bit more specifically about ED6. So as I've said, we are a very high performing and high quality sixth form. We are local. Um, at one time I used to um, market um, ED6 as a very small sixth form, although in the past couple of years due to our improved success and the high quality and high performance of the sixth form in general in the country, um, we have seen an increase in numbers, which is great. Um, so some of our class sizes would be what I would now classify as medium. And um, what we will guarantee is no large class sizes. So where our other larger colleges may have class sizes of 30 or above, 25 or above, that is not something in ED6 that we will do. We understand the difficulty of learning at this level and the pressures that our students will be under and they need one to one help or they need us to support them and it's very, very difficult to support a class full of very talented A-level students or alternative A-level students if you have too many in the room. So that's our commitment to you all. Our sixth form students do have their own area, so they do have their own study room. Now, <clears throat> this is used and sometimes, you know, I'll pop in there and our students are studying away or they're doing their homework or they're doing their independent learning. But sometimes as well, they're just sitting and they're having a chat and it's nice. It's a nice, um, relaxing, chilled out area for our students to sit and have a chat or get on with work quietly if they have any and they'd prefer to do it in the college. Our students have voted us for over um, the last five years for our high quality of teaching. But again, that comes with the experience and the qualifications of the staff who teach in AD6. We're all qualified teachers. We are also all highly qualified in our own subject areas. Um, excellent support. Yeah, I mean, I think in, in the past you'll see from our um, data that we were number one in the country for progress scores. So basically what we do and what we do very well and what we are the best at is not only getting our student to achieve their potential, but also exceed their potential. As long as you work with us, we can do that for you here. And that's based on several different reasons. Because we don't have two big class sizes, because I have a highly qualified teaching staff in ED6. So for many reasons, but this 
this is something that we do excel at. Um, the other thing I do want to mention is it, it states there we don't offer every A level. No, we don't. We don't offer every A level. You could go to a bigger college maybe and they might have a wider range of A levels. But what we did was we focused on the A levels that employers, universities and higher apprenticeship organisations said to ED6, these are the A levels that we need students to study. These are the alternative programmes that we need students to study. And these are all on our curriculum. So the, the ones that we're recommended and suggested are the ones that we offer. Now, um, we do have lots of amazing facilities, uh, you know, from if you want to be a dancer or you want to join the dance academy, if you're interested in sports, we have a wide range of brilliant sports academies that you can do alongside your studies. We have um, a theatre, which is amazing to actually have a theatre. We have restaurant, we have our own hair and beauty salons, we have lots, but when I ask the students what is the most important to you in the real world for you? They've actually said they're most important for them are the gym. Now they do say healthy body, healthy mind, and I, I must state that what I find the student when the students talk to me about the gym, they say to me, "Wonder it's just somewhere where I can focus on me and think about me, and you know, and relax." and work through some things and um, and it's not about study and so it's good um, that the students can do this for free. So the gym for you when you become a member of East Durham College is completely free to access and we actively encourage our students to do it because sometimes you do need to have a little bit of time for yourselves where you can just sit and think about yourselves or have a chat with somebody in the gym who's different to the people in your classroom. There's loads of loads of good reasons to join the gym and to be part of the gym, not only because of the exceptional resources it has in it and, you know, I mean, it wide range of, of things that it, it offers to our students, you know, football pitches, outdoor, indoor football pitches and um, huge sports hall. I mean, I, the list goes on and on, but definitely something worth checking out when you join us. The next thing that's really important to students and not just students who are traveling from outside of the area, but even students in the area. One of the most important things is that they can get to us and you can and you can get to us for free on any Arriva bus. And that as soon as you um, enroll with us and you receive your badge, you can present your college badge on any Arriva bus whatsoever and you can travel for free. And this is something that we continue to do for our students because we know that um, there's a lot of pressure and stresses on students at this age. So the last thing we want them to worry about is how am I going to get to college? We just need you to get there and to be focused and ready to learn. And if we can get you here and we can also give you that travel for free then that's something that we are committed to do for you and then the last one and some of my students tell me this is the most important one of all and um, we do have a starbucks on site now um they also tell me regularly which ones are their favorites which is great but um i'd I'm not trying to make it sound more than what it is, but generally what it is, is I go down um, and I have a look at break time sometimes and there's a group of students because there's a nice little seating area next to the Starbucks and they're just sitting and they're having a chat and they're relaxing and they're, you know, meeting new people and, and talking to their friends who they're not in lessons with, who they went to school with. And it's just a nice meeting area and good quality coffee or other drinks at the same time is always a good thing. And I have it on good information that they're very good cakes and also very good scones. So it's something to check out anyway when you join us. So we're going to look at now the A-levels in the humanities and the social sciences area, but I'll just talk to you about a little bit more in detail anyway. So we offer two programmes which are both academic routes, OK? We have a fully A-level academic route where you can study three or four subjects very much dependent upon what you come to us um, at enrollment so if you have excelled in your GCSEs then yes if you are if you are very keen to do four subjects that's something that we can discuss um, 
And also the other route is the alternative route, which is, again, is a highly academic route. But it, it the only main difference is there are not as many exams. Now, you can do some alternatives and some A-levels combined. This is where this whole broad range of curriculum comes in that we can give you in your study programme. So there's lots for you there to think about and take on board. So these are all the academic subjects that I suggested that we had. Now, again, as I've already said, there may be some not on there that you have seen in other colleges, but all of these on here are the ones that we have been recommended to offer. So we offer everything that the universities, higher apprenticeships and um, employers have asked us to deliver. He is just I've just popped this on there for you just so you can see now obviously this is not all of them I can only fit so many on here I want to give you as wide a range of um, the undergraduate degrees that our students have gone on to as I've said not all of our students go on to degrees some students go on to um, higher apprenticeships and some students go straight into careers we have some young people who go off into the Air Force the Royal Navy or the Army as well um, so but these are just some of the degrees that our students go to and you can see there's a wide range range of degrees there's some that you may never even heard of before or even knew existed um for instance aviation operations with commercial pilot training we have a young man um currently in london studying on this always probably at home now due to the lockdown but he is on his first year studying this um degree um in a london university and we also have a young man who now will be in, going into his third year of paleontology um down in port Plymouth, I believe it is. I nearly said Portsmouth, Plymouth. Um, and he is there studying and he was a formerly uh, a BTEC level three applied science student um, who went off to study paleontology. So I'm going to look at these ones particularly. I'm going to give you a bit of information about these subjects in particular in this one. Now, because the the science um, a live event which was due to start at five o'clock didn't actually run globally there's been problems with teams and um, internationally people have had problems it, fortunately we managed to get this one up and running but we couldn't get the earlier one so i have recorded that one for you all and that will be available for you to listen to and work your way through in your own time so when we're looking at a levels things that you should be thinking about are choose what you enjoy it's always a good idea Choose what you're good at. Again, that's a really strong way to be looking at these and also choose subjects related to your degree or your career or your higher level apprenticeship or any route that you're deciding to go on to. Look at what they say are essential or they say are preferred and make those choices. So um, the first one there is A-level business studies. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to have a look through. What I will be directing you to is always have a look to see what the entry requirements are to make sure, you know, that you're you're going to be able to meet those entry requirements. And um, again, at the end, we'll have a questions and answer. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask me about entry requirements for any of the A-level or alternative A-level subjects. Take a minute to have a look at this and um, any more information that you might want per subject, you can get from our website or you can also, um, if you're lucky to have a prospectus, if not, you could request a prospectus um, and you could have a look at um, more details in the prospectus for that. Now, if we do have a live event um, again um, in June or July, it may be that more of the lecturers will be available for you so you can have a live chat with them. That would be great, I think, um, if you have any other questions as well. But hopefully at the end, I should be able to answer any questions. So I'll move on to the next one. So that's your business studies. The next one, so we have our English language. So again, be looking at the entry requirements um, and thinking about am I going to get that grade or above that grade uh, and, and just be having a look at what's necessary. Also have a look at what kind of um, other subjects go well with this one um, and have a look at how it's assessed. OK, I'll move on to the English li uh, language literature for you. Sorry. 
So English literature again, so there's a breakdown of the subject itself, how it's going to be studied, what course combinations work really well, and um, also what books um, you're going to be looking at, you know, and also it will tell you the entry requirements again. So um, they are very specific for these A-level programmes. So just take a minute to have a look at that one. OK, the next one we're going to have a look at is history. So again, um, the A-level history will have its own set of entry requirements and it also will have some subjects that it recommends work very well. Um, Obviously, history will work well with both Englishes. History also works well with sociology, um, but history also works very well um, with the science areas, chemistry, biology and psychology alongside. Um, we, we have several students this year who are doing a combination of chemistry, biology and history, and it's working very, very well and very successful. And they are still looking at and thinking about going into medicine because history is a recognised A level to do that. Um, a lot of people who are thinking about studying history later on or studying English later on would like to have at least some English and history combinations as well. OK, the next one, psychology. So psychology is maybe new to some of you and it may be something which you're very, very interested in. We have a lot of success with psychology, excellent grades, excellent pass rates with psychology as well. Um, our psychology lecturer has many years of um, experience in psychology as well as being a qualified teacher. Um, there are certain um, subjects that our lecturer would also recommend go very well together with psychology. Obviously, the sciences go very well with psychology. As I said, history does, English does, sociology does, law. There's, there's a wide scope of subjects that go very, very well with psychology. Again, they'll all have their own entry requirements. And this one specifically would require a GCSE in maths or in English at a grade six or above. And it's very important. There will be a lot of written language. There will be a lot of statistical um, calculations to do in the psychology as well. So it is preferred that you have a good understanding at GCSE of English and maths. Law again, um, law is another A level, a very popular A level with our students. Um, lots of combinations with law as well. Um, I have, um, obviously I'm the chemistry lecturer as well as being the head of the sixth form, and I have a lot of students who do chemistry who actually go off and do a law degree as well. Um, so the, there's a lot of combinations to go with law. You know, there's also the ones that you would think are more familiar, criminology and sociology, but history is also a good one. Obviously the Englishes go very well with law, but science can also go very well with law as well. It has its own set of entry requirements as well. So it's important that you are looking at entry requirements when you consider and pick in any of these subjects. And A-level media. So we do run A-level media. We also run three A-levels in art subjects, photography, fine art and graphical design as well. Um, so what or graphics communication, I always call it graphicals design, sorry. Um, but um, we have um, an A-level media. Um, we also run creative industries in the East Durham College, but this is a separate entity. This is an A-level in its own on in media. And if you have a look there, the entry requirements are there. You can also have a look and see um, some of the actual trips that our media students have been on. They, they, you know, they've been into competitions. They've actually been in and worked in radio stations or being involved and looked into radio stations and TV shows. So it's really, really a, quite an exciting course for anyone who's interested in that one. A level sociology. So if you have a look there, sociology, um, sociology, also known as a social science, and um, it is the study of society. And if you have a look at the entry requirements again, now it, it, it the, the to have a very good understanding of English, it, it is very important for sociology. So a six in either English subject would be the entry requirements for sociology alongside the other um, minimum five um, GCSEs at four to nine. Um, there is no coursework in this sociology. It is all exam based. 
But if you have a look at the combination, if you have a look at the um, recommended combination of A-levels, you'll see a wide mix um, of the other A-levels that we offer in the humanities and the social sciences side. We also offer PE as an A-level um, at, at the college alongside the other A-levels. So some people who um, decide want to go into physiotherapy or um, sports science will maybe pick up some science, but pick up a PE alongside it. Um, physiotherapy and um, they'll pick up maybe the psychology and a biology and PE alongside it as well. So have a look at the entry requirements um, and obviously if you are very interested in sport or you are already a member of a team or an academy as it is then the A level may be the better option for you alongside the other A levels than the full BTEC sports um, courses that the college in general offers. So the alternative subjects in this area, so in humanities and social sciences. Now the alternatives, so don't choose the alternatives. I will say this, don't choose the alternatives because you think they're going to be easier because they're not. They're alternative because they are set up particularly for some students who are very, very bright and very, very capable and very, very talented. But when it comes to examinations, maybe don't excel on the day of the exam the way that they are capable of. Um, it could be down to stress, it could be just down to the whole way of, 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 of doing an exam might not suit them. So these alternative subjects are looking at, do, they will all do exams, however they also will have some element of coursework in there which is better suited to some individuals more so than just all examinations. So, um, we offer alongside the A-level psychology, we offer an, an applied psychology route as well. Now the applied psychology, so you will be studying the same psychology, you will be looking at uh, maybe different areas, so maybe focusing more on cognitive than social or vice versa, depending on the A-level. However, the main difference between this and the A-level is, the A-level is all examinations, the applied psychology, is an exam and some coursework elements. So better suited to those of you who maybe would prefer not to do six hours worth of examinations at the end of year two. Not easier by a long shot, just different in how it is assessed. OK. And then the next one that we offer is criminology. So this is applied criminology. This again is an alternative. And because it's an alternative, again, it is not only examination based, it is exam and part coursework based, so better suited again. Um, it, it has some really, you can combine this with other A-levels, for instance, psychology, law, um, sociology, they go very well with, they go well with history, they go well with a whole wide range of subjects. Now, um, but this is a full A-level equivalent in the end, exactly the same points if you're moving on to university is what an A-level would give you. Now, career pathways also with this criminology. So obviously we're looking at policing, but we're also looking at social work, criminal justice. Um, working for charity and non-profit organisations is also something very good that this criminology course could set you up for. OK, so we're nearly at the end. So what's next? All right, if you want to apply to us and you're already set and you haven't yet got that application, I would advise that you do that as soon as possible because we are getting very busy. We have had an increase in our numbers again this year. So if you want to guarantee yourself a place, then get that application in if you haven't already done so. So there's the link for that one. What we are also running currently, and we started that today, is for anybody who is a year 11 student or anybody who's considering moving on to A-levels and only previously has done GCSEs, we are offering sessions with all of the lecturers in all of or nearly all of the subjects. And if you want to join them, either the BTEX or the A-levels, and you want to join that, there's the link for that one as well. And we're running these sessions where we're going to be teaching online. There are going to be lots of interaction and chat. And it's about getting you ready and prepared 
to move on, but it's also about getting you to start communicating with your peers who are, might be in the same class as you, getting to know us a little bit, just starting to feel part of our community. It's really quite important. And I think as well, some of you may be a bit worried that maybe you haven't learned everything in GCSE that you needed to, or because you haven't been doing it for so long now, it's going to be too long and you're not going to remember th stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over GCSE and then move you into A-level territory or alternative A-level territory. So it's about getting you interacting with us, feeling part of the community and also recapping and improving on some of your GCSEs as well, getting you prepared for our A-level. We are hoping to do more open evenings. Um, and we would really love to be doing these in person. We do find this is obviously much better in person. Um, but obviously, like you, we, we will only find that out um, version of the government. So um, just keep looking out if you want to attend any other session. It may be you want to attend a science one because the science one wasn't running. Um, but just keep looking out for these events. You can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We have our own for AD6. We also have ADC, but we have our own in AD6. We have our own Facebook Facebook account and Instagram account. Check it out there. There will be testimonials from students. You'll get to meet the staff. Just have a look. And what should you be doing now? OK, so what you should definitely be doing now is if whatever subjects you're thinking about taking, you know, go back, keep that GCSE knowledge up. You can either do that on your own with BBC Bite Size or you could join us and you could do that with us. Um, your choice either way, but we would definitely welcome you on our moving on and moving up. And um, we definitely think that it would be beneficial to anybody who's thinking about joining AD6 to already start to feel part of our community and that you belong. Now, this is where we've got questions and answers, so please feel free um, to ask any questions. If you want to type in any questions now and I'll answer them for you as soon as I possibly can. So I'll, I'll stay on now for um, five, ten minutes or so, however long. If you have any questions, please feel free, fire away and I'm here and ready to answer them for you. If you don't know where the chat is, it's on the top right hand side, everybody, just in case you're not sure where it is. So you, there should be a chat at the top right hand side that you can join. If you can't think of any questions now and you um, want to get away, please feel free. I, I won't be offended if there's no questions. It, that's maybe the sign that I've, I've given you the information that you need, which is great. Um, but I am very happy to take any questions if you have any. And even if you don't have any now and you do want to um, get back in touch with me, remember you can email me directly on wanda.scott at eastdurham.ac.uk and I should be able to um, answer any of your queries or your questions or give you some advice and guidance if that is also required.
ですね。